Rock City Networks, tonedef.com.au, coming to you from a quaint little alleyway in the back of, uh, I think this is South Yarra, possibly Hawksman, not too sure. You should know. Had a little too much to drink, so that's fine. But uh, <laughs> joining me are the boys from Polar Nation, uh, Matty Charles, Arky Roadbird, Samson Thompson, how are you boys? Yeah, good, man. Good. You, uh, you just recently played, uh, you had your album launch tour here in Melbourne, how'd that go? Yeah, the Melbourne show was the best one yet, we think. Yeah, Red Bennies killed yeah. it. Packed to the brims like sardines yeah. in a tin. Yeah, it was a lovely thing. Yeah. Yeah. You lovely thing. Lots of love here. Yeah. Now, where did you guys start the uh, Where did you guys start the tour? You did. Uh, you started Arts the Oxford Arts first, and then you did a couple of snow shows. Take us through that. Yeah, Sydney was on August 11th, yeah. and we did Oxford Art Factory. Thanks to them for letting us do that on such a short notice. We only had three weeks to get it together, so we only had actually one full band rehearsal before that, but. Went really well, Yeah. good response, uh, and hopefully going to be doing a residency there in November or December. Well, that was great. And uh, the, the, the one interesting thing I, 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 uh, I sort of noticed about the Oxford Arts Factory as well is um, it happened to be on the same weekend as Splendour in the Grass and you still pulled a good crowd. You packed it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. for which the first is, show. Which is something I just wanted to, you know, sort of highlight because... Um, you know, uh, when you when you put a gig on when a big event is on like that, you're basically fucked yeah. <laughs> most of the time. And I'm you you managed you managed you managed to pull a pretty good crowd there, yeah. Yeah, it was a yeah. great night. You know, I mean, sure there was some friends and uh, you know a bit of a personal crowd because mm. it was the first show ever. But we got a lot of people off the street, and the other room was busy too. But we just you know no one left the the show, so yeah. it was great. Yeah. And how was the snow shows? Like they're they're notoriously hard because it's generally like locals. People like their specific genre of music. You guys went up there and did your thing. How'd it go at uh, Swindlers, I believe Swindlers, you played? Swindlers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hotham. Again, another great show. Heaps of people in the venue. It was uh, in conjunction with uh, Oakley. Yeah. So they had their crew down there as well. And uh, as I said once before, you know, they're just happy that the music was loud and everyone just had a great night. Yeah, it was all those yeah. extreme sports yeah. kids. So they were getting wild, but it was a very long day. We came from Sydney. We got up at three in the morning to get yeah. a six o'clock flight and no then sleep. drove for four hours. Luckily, it's a nice drive, you know, and then we got up to the mountain, had like half an hour sleep, rocked the mics, killed the show, mm. slept for a couple hours, got in the car, drove back to Melbourne. Yeah, mm. cool. Yeah. All right, now let's get into, um, let's get into the specifics of the uh, band itself uh, uh, or, or, or the outfit itself. Matty, you originally came from uh, Dirty Laundry, who is quite a well-respected band uh, countrywide for their live performances. Uh, why did you leave and why did you decide to join Pollination? Well, originally, you know, before I was even in Dirty Laundry, the genre of music that I most loved was uh, hip-hop and uh, rock music. And I came to Melbourne, moved from the country, and I joined this electronic outfit. And I, I worked as a live MC with Dirty Laundry for about four years. I, I'd done a lot of gigs with them. And then I met the guys here, Aki and Samson, at a Dirty Laundry gig actually in um, Sydney. And we became close mates, and um, then Aki's music sort of drew me closer to uh, the brand that you see now as Pollination. Yeah, yeah, mm. cool, mm. cool, cool. Now, now we'll move to the middle here, Aki. Uh, you've got a bit of a history behind you. Um, can you, 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 you've won a, quite a few awards in the U.S., right? Uh, the last for, award for stuff, we got, yeah? uh, we won a Native American Music Award for best uh, new age release. For and my... when you say we, just to, just to get specific so people know, who are you talking about? Well, then? it was my dad's album, Medicine Crow. It was called Homeland, Sec uh, Homeland Security. And it was kind of like, uh, he, he does the real kind of traditional native flutes and drums and kind of world music. And I said, look, I want, I want to put some beats to your stuff and give it a bit more of a new school thing. And it was just really kind of like testing the water. And we sent it to the, the Native American Music Awards and they loved it. And he actually went over there to the awards. Uh, it was up somewhere near Canada on one of the reservations up there and accepted the award for New Age and got the little trophy with a little Coca Pelli dude on it. And <laughs> that's cool, you know. And I think right, that we're going right, to try and get Polar Nation um, over there and hopefully get something from the Native American Music Awards again. Yeah. But 
that was a great experience. But uh, yeah, I've been doing this for quite a while. I mean, my family is kind of like 80% musicians. My brother Cloud Hunter has been playing since I can remember. You know, I think the first band he had, I was like eight. Just quietly, it's a great fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, there you go, the lucky kind of family lucky names that we man. get. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and my dad was an old jazz player, actually a cousin of the jazz great Hank Mobley. Yeah. So it's kind of in the blood. And I, I did, go. I had my first group, Little Horse, which was around 2000. And we did a couple of years, uh, seven nights a week in Sydney. I mean, a lot of the old school cats might remember Little Horse. And then when I finished with them, I did two solo albums. My first one was Cherokee Red. Um, which is more that old school 90s jazz hip hop. Uh, all, all myself, I produced it, wrote it, recorded it, and yeah. never really got it mixed and mastered. It was just like that underground style. And then I did Power Wow, which was only like four years ago. Yeah. It was around the first time I started working with Samson, who I've been developing now for about five years, produced his demo, which he's uh, doing some music with. But yeah, then I, you know, I, I've known Will Banks, is uh, the business partner in Pollination with me, the idea. and known him for a long time and the boys met him uh, in Melbourne actually I think Machi I've been working with Will yeah he was he hanging knew, out yeah. knew me before Dirty Laundry yeah, yeah. and just kept his eye on me yeah. you know over the years yeah, he's, yeah. Good, he's good like yeah. that yeah. it's a great story you know I mean he Samson was in town just hanging out with Machi and they were out at some bar or something and saw Big Willie at the at the bar being a maniac as you know <laughs> if you know yeah. Big Willie and said oh this is this is Samson you know he's doing some work have a talk and you said something about I'm working with Aki Redbird. Redbird and he goes ah yeah, no that name. old bastard yeah. Yeah. Uh, why don't you make a track? And originally it was just about doing a single for the, for the boys here and getting them on some tracks and, you know, trying some different styles. And I made, I think, like three original tracks and I sang the parts where I thought we could get some female vocalists or other mm -hmm. male singers. And he said, look, I'm not doing it without you. And kind of went single, 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 let's make an album. And I was yeah. like, yeah, well, hooray. You know? Yeah, yeah. Now, now uh, just, to, just to stop you there quickly before we get into the album stuff, what about yourself, Samson? Uh, you've, you've gone overseas. You've... Uh, yeah. You've, you've done some stuff in Germany, I believe, and, yeah. and it takes us through that. Uh, what's, well, where did that lead to? Well, I went overseas when I was about 21, and um, my dad actually hooked me up a flight. Yeah. And got some shows in Germany, Austria, and Prague. Yeah. And it was just pretty much amazing, as uh, Aki was talking about before, my demo, War Dogs. Yeah. And just played those shows and came back and then kept on working yeah, on yeah. music and came down and met Willie and... This is pretty much where we're at now. Yeah, so you've all been linked up now. As as far as as far as getting the material together was concerned, you were saying that uh, you were just slowly building singles with uh, Will Arkey, and uh, yeah. what you you were you're doing that a lot over email, from how I understand, and then you got yourself down to Hot House. Yeah. Well, yeah, the process was, I mean, and still is. I make most of the music, well, pretty much all the music I write at home, and I write basic hooks and choruses and ideas. Uh, to get the tracks kind of like beefy enough to send to the boys that they can write to it and then they by email send it back and forth. I mean, Samson's in Sydney as well, so he comes past and records stuff with me. But with mm. Marchi, it was just like email, this is what it's about, you know, put a little bit of your medicine on it. And, mm. and then I'd send it to Willie and he'd go, oh, it needs more guitar, it needs less synth or something like that. And, and then once we finally had a something we thought which was, you know, going to keep going, we go to Hot House with at least five or six and then just try and punch out six <laughs> tracks in a day. And mm. there was a time there at Hot House where I did seven days, 14 hour days in a row and broke my balls, but you know, mm -hmm. Still sounds product. good. Yeah. yeah so, great. you know, uh, and, and, and then, you know, you find yourself uh, bringing out the album. There's a, I'm going to be brutally honest here, three guys on a stage. Uh, Sexy. <laughs> but, 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 you know, the, the, the general music punter will go, oh, Hilltop Boy, Hoods, mm. uh, oh, yeah. Bliss and Esso, mm. we, got, we, we do have to go here. Uh, on, what, where, where, what, what is the, what is the difference there between, the, between well, another three-piece act that has done something before and won an awards to you guys? The band. Well, I think that, I mean, in general, the music is not really hip-hop. It's yeah. got rhymes and that there is lyricism, but it's kind of rock-based music. And then the, the tempo is maybe 50 to 60 BPMs higher than anything hip-hop is doing. Yeah. Um, and it's not really that kind of arc hop or whatever it's called, you know. This is kind of about world music, you yeah. know, and a little bit of a flavor from everything that we love, rock, funk, dance, R&B, hip hop, and just putting it all together and making it native, you know, mm. doing whatever you want, no rules, mm. you know. And uh, I, I guess, you know, the big nod you got was that uh, you, you got your track on, uh, you got uh, uh, Sleep on uh, Mad on Mad Bastards, which did quite yeah. well overseas. Yeah. No, that was great, you know, and that's just another thing, like Polar Nation, things just keep falling into place, you know, and... That was just a score. Uh, Dean Daly-Jones is like an adopted brother of mine. He's the main actor, TJ on Mad Bastard. 
And I went with, a, with him to a meeting with the, the director, Brendan Fletcher, and they were saying how they needed something kind of rocky, hip hoppy to be stuck in between one of these little, you know, inserts of a tiny little part because the, the soundtrack had already been written by the Pigman Brothers, who are amazing musicians, and Alex Lloyd. And they just had this one little part, and I said, look, man, I've got some tracks. You know, we haven't even finished the album yet, but... And they just dropped it on there. I gave him a couple, yeah. I think I gave him Sleep and New Day, and he called me that night and was like, man, we want Sleep, we're going to do it. And so it's on the soundtrack, we saw our names on the big screen, Australian yeah. feature film, went to Sundance with the Pigrams and Brendan and, and Kuda Boy, and had a trip over there. I was living with the Pigrams over there and their family, and so I got a chance to kind of hang out with some real music heads, and... No, the sky's the limit. Well, yeah. And we're sorry. And with that, we got a lot of the footage from the film from Brendan yeah, to they, actually make yeah, our put into the film clip. Yeah, the film clip was great. Yeah. Now, well, uh, you you got one more show. It's August 27. It's at uh, the Beach Road Hotel. Anybody anybody that's around the Byron Bay area wants to drive down from the Gold Coast, make sure you check it out. Yeah. Um, boys, we'll let you go because I don't want to keep you uh, too long. It's fucking cold out here. Well, <laughs> more for me. I'm just being selfish. I want to get out of the cold. But um, the if you want any more information on these guys, you can go to all the w's dot, uh, YouTube dot com forward slash The Polar Nation. And on Facebook, you can go to Facebook dot com forward slash Polar Nation. The album is out right now. Uh, go check them out. Uh, they're good boys. They're good fun. And uh, I'm sure we'll be catching up with you fellas soon. Like Benny Thanks, Pitcher. Benny, Benny Pitcher. Pitcher. Matty Charles, Arky Redbird, Samson Thompson here for Pollination. It's for Rock City Networks and tonedef.com.au.